Dear God, please bless me with the gift of a child. I long to experience the joys of motherhood. You are the giver of life, the author of creation, and the one who knows our deepest desires. I ask that you bless me with the gift of fertility, that I may conceive a child and experience the miracle of pregnancy. Make my womb be filled with life, just like you did with Sarah. Also, I humbly ask for your divine guidance and assistance in fulfilling my dream of starting my own restaurant. I lack the financial means to make it a reality. Please open doors, provide opportunities, and bless me with the necessary resources to establish my restaurant, where I can create a warm and welcoming space for others to enjoy. <laughs> Honey, I had the most amazing dream last night. I dreamt about owning the biggest restaurant in the city. That's incredible, darling. You know, anything is possible if you truly believe. It's funny how dreams work, isn't it? When we met at the cooking competition with you being one of the judges, and I was just a contestant, if someone had told me in a dream I'd end up with you I'd never have believed it. Oh, how could I forget? That was the moment I realized how talented you were, even though you didn't win. Your passion for cooking was captivating. I've come a long way since then, but I still have this burning desire to make my mark in the culinary world. I believe in you, my love. You have the skills, the determination, and the vision to turn your dream into reality. Thank you, sweetheart. Your unwavering belief in me means the world. But enough about my dream, what about yours? Did you hear back about the cooking show you applied for? <clears throat> Not yet, but I'm hoping for the best. It's a major TV show, and if I get the job, it would be a game changer for both of us. I couldn't ask for a better partner in life. Good afternoon, Mr. Singh. Please, have a seat. I have been eagerly waiting for this moment, sir. Do you have any news regarding the cooking show position? Yes, Mr. Singh, I have good news for you. After carefully reviewing all the applicants, you have been selected as one of the judges for the show. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Patel. This means the world to me. I've been dreaming of this opportunity for so long. Your passion for culinary arts and your dedication to the craft have impressed the team. We believe you will bring a fresh perspective to the show. I won't disappoint you, Mr. Patel. I'll give my best and contribute everything I have to make the show a success. Congratulations, Mr. Singh. Sweetheart. I have a surprise for you. I got you something special. What's in all these boxes on the floor? I bought you all 17 items on your Amazon wish list. Do you like it? Oh, um, thank you, dear. I appreciate the gesture. Is something wrong, love? You don't seem as thrilled as I expected. It's not about the gift, honey. It's just... I was thinking about something else. I've been feeling a bit down lately. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's been bothering you? You know, after Tori's baby shower last week, I realized all my female friends are now mothers or about to be. It reminds me of our situation. We've been trying for 15 years now, it's so difficult. I understand, my love. I know how much it means to you. We've faced challenges, but we're in this together. I know, but sometimes it feels overwhelming. I see their joy, their happiness. And I wish we could experience that too. It's okay to feel this way. But remember, our journeys are unique. We will have our baby in God's timing. I know, but it's just hard sometimes. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to hold our own child, to experience the bond of parenthood. Mr. Singh, I understand how difficult this journey has been for you. We've exhausted every possible means to address your infertility issue, but unfortunately, we haven't found a solution. Doctor, I'm willing to pay any amount, try any treatment. Please, there must be something more we can do. I can't bear the thought of not having a child with my wife. I truly empathize with your pain, Mr. Singh. I wish there were a definitive solution, but sometimes medical science has its limitations. Perhaps you should discuss with your wife about adopting a child instead. Doctor, 
I can't bear to open up to my wife about this. I'm afraid that if I do, she might leave me. I don't want to lose her. I'm afraid, keeping this burden to yourself will only create more distance between you and your wife. She deserves to know what you're going through. I don't want her to see me as a failure. It's natural to have these fears, but you won't know how your wife truly feels unless you share your pain with her. Trust in the love and bond you both share. Sing. My wife told me you stopped by at my place today. It's true, Henry. I'd like to open a savings account and deposit a substantial amount into it. I figured since my friend is a banker, I should probably talk to him first. Of course, that's very thoughtful of you. I hope your bank offers a good interest rate. Very much. May I ask how much you'd like to deposit? I've saved up $100,000 so far. I want to ensure it's secure and continue adding to it. That's quite an impressive sum, Singh. If I may ask, what are you saving for? Well, I'm actually saving up to fulfill my wife's dream of owning a first-class restaurant. Ah, Singh, you're such a romantic. Your love for your wife knows no bounds. She means the world to me. I want to create something extraordinary for her, a place where she can showcase her talent and passion for cooking. I have no doubt that the restaurant will be a tremendous success. Thank you. Don't tell my wife but... I'm also planning a surprise vacation for her. Singh, you're spoiling your wife rotten. A first-class restaurant and a vacation? You're setting the bar quite high for the rest of us. Well, she deserves nothing but the best. I wish you both a fantastic journey. Thank you. I don't understand. It's been 15 long years of praying and believing, yet here I am, still childless and without my own established restaurant. I've poured out my heart to you, cried countless tears, and held on to hope against all odds. Why have you not granted me these desires? I've seen others around me receive the blessings they've longed for, while I remain in this state of longing. I've watched as friends and family celebrate the joy of motherhood, and I've witnessed others flourish in their own businesses. But why not me, God? What have I done wrong? Why do you withhold these blessings from me? Well, if you don't want to grant me a baby and a restaurant of my own, then I'll take matters into my own hands. It's time for me to stop relying on your timing and find my own solutions. That's what I'm going to do. Welcome home, darling. You're late today. Is everything okay? It's been a long day and there was unusually heavy traffic on my way back. I'm sorry I'm late. No need to apologize, my love. I was just worried about you. I have cooked and cleaned to make your evening easier and more relaxing. Oh, that's sweet of you, but I've already had dinner at work. Oh. Um, you should have called to inform me you'd be eating out. I'm sorry about that. I have to go shower please. I'm too tired. Singh, I don't want to upset you, but I've seen your wife in some unusual places lately. Places where a married woman shouldn't be. What do you mean? Can you give me some examples? Well, I'd rather not say. I just think you should be careful and watch her closely. My wife is a chef, and her work often takes her to different places. It's possible that she was there for professional reasons. I understand that, Singh, but in these instances, it didn't seem work-related. I just wanted to give you a heads up as a friend. I know how much you love your wife. I appreciate your concern, but I trust my wife. We have a strong relationship built on trust and honesty. I get it, and I'm not trying to create unnecessary doubts. I'm just saying that you should be vigilant and observe any changes in her behavior or any inconsistencies. Okay, I will keep an eye out. I hope everything turns out fine. Honey, it's getting late. Let's go to bed and get some rest. Actually, I was thinking. Maybe we should start sleeping in different rooms from now on. Different rooms? But why, my love? 
We've always slept together, and you've never mentioned any issues before. I don't know. It's just that I've been feeling the need for some space lately. I think it would be better for both of us. But we've always enjoyed sleeping next to each other. Is something bothering you? Please, talk to me. I want to understand. It's not about you. I'm surprised to hear this from you all of a sudden. Can you help me understand why you feel this way? I can't explain it clearly right now. It's just a feeling I have, and I think it's best if we give it a try. You've always hated sleeping alone, and now you're suggesting we sleep in separate rooms without a clear reason. Is there something else going on that you're not telling me? No, there's nothing else. Can you please respect my wish? I don't want to argue about it right now. I need some time alone. Good night. What is happening? Why is she suddenly distancing herself? It's all so unlike her. Maybe. Maybe I should check her devices. I know it's not ideal, but I need some answers. I need to know if there's something she's not telling me, something that might explain her recent behavior. Who is this guy? Smith Holland? Isn't he my wife's high school sweetheart? They've been texting on Facebook without my knowledge. I'll go through all of their messages from the very beginning. Mr. Singh quickly discovered from their chat history that his wife and her high school sweetheart had cheated on him multiple times at a hotel out of town. They even went on a couple of dates the previous week, explaining why his wife no longer eats at home. It made Mr. Singh livid. Thank you for seeing me, Mr. John. I've made up my mind, and I want a divorce. Not next week, or tomorrow. I want it right now. Calm down, Mr. Singh. May I ask what has prompted this urgency? I recently discovered messages on my wife's computer. She's been cheating on me. I took screenshots as evidence in case she tries to deny it. I'm truly sorry to hear that, Mr. Singh. It must be incredibly painful to learn about your spouse's infidelity. It's devastating, Mr. John. We've built a life together, shared dreams, and supported each other through thick and thin. I never thought I'd be facing something like this. I understand how betrayed you must feel. Rest assured, I'm here to support you. We will proceed with the divorce process and ensure that your rights and interests are protected. Thank you, Mr. John. What's going on? Why are you packing? Don't act surprised. I know about the chat on your computer. The messages with your high school sweetheart, the mention of your recent date. How could you do this to me? Wait, what chat? It's not what you think. Please, let me explain. Oh, I'm all ears. Please, enlighten me. I can't believe you found those messages. But you need to know that I didn't cheat on you. I would never do that. I love you. Save your excuses. This is not the time for lies. You've shattered our trust, and I can't bear it anymore. Please, listen to me. I'm not lying. I didn't cheat on you. The reason I've been distant lately is because... I'm pregnant. Pregnant? Wow! Congratulations. Perhaps this is the right moment for me to break this news to you. I'm infertile. I can't have a child. What? Infertile? How come I had no idea? Well, now you do. I don't know, honey. Perhaps a miracle happened, a chance we never expected. I'm just as shocked as you are. Please, believe me. Yeah, a miracle happened right after you started seeing your high school sweetheart. Look for a better lie. Please don't leave me. Good afternoon, Singh. I'm sorry to intrude, but I noticed that you closed the savings account you had opened for your wife's restaurant. Is there any issue with your account or our bank services? What? Singh has been saving up for my restaurant. Oh no. What have I done? Patel. It's not about your bank or the account. I closed it because... Because my wife and I are getting a divorce. Oh, I'm truly sorry to hear that, Singh. It's okay. Circumstances have led me down this path, and now I have to make some tough decisions. I can only offer my deepest condolences, Singh. If there's anything I can do to assist or support you during this time, 
please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you, Patel. Please, honey, don't leave me. I truly love you, and I can't imagine my life without you. My mind is made up, and I can't ignore the pain and betrayal I feel right now. You are the reason I cheated. If you had given me a child, I would have been content with our home. But you kept the truth of your infertility from me. You were responsible for what happened. That's ridiculous. My infertility doesn't justify your infidelity. No, you don't understand. I longed for a child, and you kept me in the dark. I felt empty and neglected, and that's why I sought comfort elsewhere. I can't believe you're putting the blame on me. If you were that unhappy, you should have told me. I would have been open to embracing other options such as adopting a child. Cheating was not the solution. You don't get it. You don't understand how it feels to yearn for something and never have it. You didn't have to face the constant reminders, the longing every time I saw our friends with their children. I'm out of here. My husband is gone. I feel so lost. I'm sorry to hear that, but we can't be together, especially not now. I don't want anything to jeopardize my marriage. How can you say that? You the father of my child. I won't let you use me and then just walk away. What? How can you be certain that the baby is mine? Cause my husband is infertile. I just found out. I can't simply take your word for it. I know you've been involved with other men. I'm not convinced I'm the only one. How can you say that? I've been faithful to my husband, except for our past relationship. Hit me all you want, it doesn't change the fact that I don't trust your words. If you want me to take responsibility, we'll need a DNA test to confirm the paternity of the child. Fine. If that's what it takes to prove it to you, then I'll do it. But don't think you can just walk away like that. Ma'am, I have the results of the paternity test you requested. Yes, please tell me. The test confirms that Mr. Smith is indeed the biological father of your child. Ma'am, why do you look sad? This is good news. Mr. Smith being the father means you have clarity regarding your child's parentage. I know, but... It's complicated, doctor. Mr. Smith and I are not together. I was hoping he wouldn't be the father. I understand. But remember that your child's well-being should be the focus. Thank you, doctor. Smith, it's been confirmed. You the father. Great, you're about to ruin my marriage of 12 years. I won't let you disrupt my family. I didn't ask for any of this, Smith. I thought we had something special, but now I'm facing this alone. Our child deserves to know their father. You expect me to abandon everything I've built with my wife and children? That's not happening. I won't let you jeopardize their happiness. This isn't just about you or me, Smith. It's about our child. He has a right to know his biological father, to have a connection with you. I won't expose my family to this scandal. If you want me to take responsibility for the baby, you need to keep it a secret. No one can ever know the truth. You're asking me to deny our child a relationship with his own father, to live a lie? Is that fair to our baby? Life isn't always fair. This is the best solution for everyone involved. You either accept it or leave me out of the picture entirely. Fine, Smith. I'll keep the baby a secret. But remember, I expect you to provide financial support and be there whenever he needs you. All right, I'll accept responsibility for the child, but only under these conditions. I hope you understand the weight of this decision, Smith. It's settled then. From this moment on, we keep this between us. Goodbye, Mrs. Singh. <gasps> Singh, I've been worried about you. I appreciate your concern, Johnson, but I'm not sure I'm ready to talk. I understand, my friend. But keeping it all bottled up won't do you any good. Trust me, I've been through my fair share of struggles. 
Sometimes, talking it out can provide some relief. All right, Johnson. What is it? You know, Singh, I've known you for a long time, and I can't help but think about how things might have been different if you had been honest with your wife about your infertility. Are you blaming me for my wife's infidelity? How can you say that? No, Singh, that's not what I meant. I don't blame you, and I don't think your wife's actions were justified. But sometimes, openness and communication can prevent such situations from arising in the first place. I can't believe you would insinuate that I am responsible for her betrayal. I trusted her, and she chose to cheat with her high school sweetheart. Singh, I'm not saying it's your fault. What she did was wrong, no question about it. I'm just suggesting that if you had shared your struggles with her, perhaps things could have been different. It might have helped strengthen your relationship. <laughs> I miss her, Johnson. But I can't go back to her. She betrayed me in the worst possible way, with someone from her past. If she was capable of doing it once, who's to say she wouldn't do it again? Subscribe for more true stories.